Hello, do we have a game for you today? Alareza Ferruja against Linier Dominguez in the Super Bets Chess Classic. I don't want to waste your time. Let's jump right in. It's round seven. Alareza has needed a win. He's had one loss and a bunch of draws. Spoiler alert on this one, there is a brilliancy. Alareza has white, Linier Dominguez has black. Let's begin. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop to b4. Dominguez plays the Nimzo Indian. E3, the Rubenstein variation from Ferruja. Castles, bishop to d3, d5, cd5, ed5, a3. Asking a question of the bishop. Are you going to take the knight or are you going to retreat? Taking the knight is not a good idea because in this case, white just has a strong pawn center and a two bishop advantage. So he retreats to d6, queen to c2, c6, knight g to e2. And this is similar to a queen's gambit exchange variation, except the bishop is inside the pawn chain instead of outside of it. White would like to play f3 and e4 and advance in the center. Rook to e8. Black wants to clamp down on e4, so white can't do that. Bishop to d2, b6, f3. And this is already a novelty, believe it or not, which is strange considering this seems like a very natural plan for the position. Uh, but of course he wants to play e4, c5. So uh, Dominguez attacks the center, keep trying to keep Ferruja busy. So he can't play e4 just yet. g4. Now this particular move is sort of a, an idea that white plays in these structures when they can't bring e4 uh, on the board. Now there is risk obviously involved in a move like this. Uh, king safety can be a little touch and go, but uh, you have to do something here. And g4 is a, actually a very natural move, gaining space and attacking the king side. Dominguez plays c4. This is a committal move. He's basically chopping the board in half. He's saying, I'm going to attack on the queen side. I'm going to advance these pawns, b5, a5, b4. And that tells Ferruja that if he wants anything, he's going to have to create activity in the center and on the king side. He plays bishop to f5, the only move that doesn't lose the bishop. Bishop f5, queen f5, g6, queen to g5, knight to c6, completing development, castles, and bishop to f8. This keeps some defense around the king. And perhaps it could come later and put some pressure, keep some pressure on the d4 pawn. Queen to h4. Ferruja would still like to play e4 if it is possible. Uh, and here, uh, Dominguez plays h6. And he does it for this reason. Let's, let's imagine it's Ferruja's move here, and he plays the move e4. After d e4, he would have this move, bishop to g5, a very strong pin that would make Dominguez's life absolutely miserable. So he plays h6 to preempt that pin. Rook a to d1. e4 here is just, this is just bad uh, for white. And Ferruja said that directly in the uh, post-game interview. Rook a to d1, keeping this d4 point strong. It's important to have stability in the position that d4 stays strong for white. b5, the queenside pawns begin to advance. Queen to f2 queen to d7, queen to g2, again helping potentially to support the advance of the e-pawn, bishop to g7, and Ferruja in the post-mortem said, black is only two moves away from breaking on the queen side, right? a5, b4. So he's like, I got two moves to generate activity. If I don't generate activity in the next two moves, I'm going to be in trouble. So he begins with h4. He'd like to play g5, but if he plays g5 too soon, this knight can go to h5 and clog up all of his kingside activity. Knight to e7. So knight f4 is played. Keep some pressure on d5. And now after g5, the knight can't go to h5 because it will be captured by the knight at f4. a5. Dominguez continues his queenside pressure, threatening b4. Knight c to e2. The knight reroutes to the kingside at g3. Also, uh, unveils this bishop on b4, making it a little bit harder for black to advance on the queen side. Now, Dominguez plays queen to b7 here, and uh, Ferruja um, criticized this. It wasn't the computer recommendation, which was rook e to b8. And there's some real deep insight here. Ferruja said you would obviously not play the queen to b7 because you want to keep the queen in the middle of the board, so it only makes sense that you would move the rook over. So there's no calculation on his part, and the computer's calculating. He's just using deep logic and says that this was the better choice for Dominguez. So he plays queen to b7, obviously supporting the advance of the b pawn here. So Ferruja has to strike. 
G5 is his move. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight to D7. And now King to F2 was played. Uh, the idea is he wants to give his rooks access to the H file. B4. Dominguez continues his queenside pressure. Rook to H1. And now Dominguez plays knight to F5, a move that at first glance looks like a pretty good one. Obviously, putting some pressure on this E3 pawn and D4, but it's actually a blunder. Um, but it takes a lot of deep insight to see why it's a blunder. And guess what Faruja has? A lot of deep insight. And he plays the key move here. The move is queen to H3. Now, why does queen to H3 make knight to F5 a blunder? Well, let's say, for example, that Dominguez just continued on with his regular plan. Let's say he just played rook E to B8. Then Faruja could play queen to H7 check. And after king to F8, Knight to h5 hits the dark squared bishop, a bishop he could not afford to lose. If he lost that bishop for the knight, he would just be finished. His squares would be devastated. But after pawn takes knight, now this knight at f5 would be hanging. Queen takes f5, and this is an easy win for white. Just take the pawn at eight, h5. And not only that, he's threatening knight to h5 even in this position. Uh, if the king just moved to f8, he could still just play knight to f5, and the pawn could not take the knight. So Dominguez has to play a very tough move, and Svidler, who was analyzing this game live, said this is the hardest kind of move a chess player ever has to play, and that is admitting that the move you just made was a mistake. But he does make the move. He goes back to e7. He just simply takes his move back. But now Farouge is in a better attacking position. Knight to g3. Rook to a6, the rook can do some defending along the 6th rank, but it also can move to b6 to support uh, attacking down the b-file. a b4, a b4. So this knight would love to settle on f8, and it would be a strong defensive piece. So what Ferruja decides to do is to trade this bishop on d2 for this knight. How does he do that? Well, he grabs the b4 pawn, and that draws the queen away, and now his queen captures the knight. The rook goes back to a8, knight f to e2 to block any checks that might occur. Uh, also, uh, again, keeping this pawn strong. Rook A to D8, Queen to G4, Queen to B2. Now, watch very carefully. Faruja plays Queen to F4. I said there was a brilliancy in this game. Well, this move sets that brilliancy up. It's a very, very hard move to see. And Linear Dominguez, a player that's 2758, did not see it. And he played the move knight to c6. Now, can you see the double exclamation move from Ferruja? That's right. Rook to h7, double exclam. Well, what is the threat? Can't the king just take the rook? Well, if the king takes the rook, queen takes f7, and there is literally nothing to be done. Rook h1 mate is unstoppable. He just has a couple of spite checks, but that, that would be all there is to it. What if he just continued on playing as normal and advanced that pawn? Well, then rook takes bishop check, king takes rook, queen to f6 check, king g8, and again rook h1, and mate at h8 is simply unstoppable. So Dominguez stops this queen to f6 threat first. He plays rook to e6 to cover the f6 square, and he did it with only one second on the clock before time control. You had to play 40 moves to reach time control. This was move 36. So he's playing pretty much completely in his increment at this point. Queen to h4, lining up on the h-file. And knight takes d4. It's really the only choice he has. Rook takes bishop, king takes bishop, queen coming into h6, rook coming into h1. You know, boom, 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 and, and the game would be over. So he has to give up the material. Knight takes d4. Rook g7 check, king g7, queen takes knight check, queen takes, rook takes. Now, in this endgame, uh, with material fairly fairly equal, uh, two knights versus a, a rook and pawn, Faruja is actually completely winning in this position because he has this really nice dark square blockade. The knight at e2 will just go to c3, and the pressure on d5 will eventually become unbearable. Rook e to d6, and here Linear Dominguez reached time control, so 30 minutes was added to his clock. Knight c3, f6, pawn takes, king takes, knight g to e2, play the knight to f4 to put pressure on d5. King comes to e5, rook g4, of course that just hits g6. Rook g8, knight to d4, rook d7, check, pushing the king back, locking the rook in on g5 with f4, 
rook g to d8, rook to e5, king f7, rook to g5. And Ferugia takes his time here, by the way. There were other times he could have grabbed the d5 pawn, but he just decided to follow the rule in the end game to you take as long as you can to win, sort of wear your opponent down. Rook h8 wants to penetrate on the h-file. Knight to f3 covers the h2 square. King g7, rook to g1, rook b7, rook to a1, coming along the other side of the pawn. Rook d8, knight to d4, rook d to d7, and now rook to a5. And now the d5 pawn is a goner. g5, f5, rook to b2 check, king to f3, rook to d2. He finally takes the material. c3, and then knight to e6, check. And here, Linear Dominguez resigned. Uh, what would happen? Let's look at a couple of moves. If he plays king to f7, then just knight takes g5 is with check. And again, the material uh, is way too much. If he plays something like king to h6 to try to hold on to that pawn, it's really a nice variation. Frugia plays rook to a1, threatening rook to h1 mate. Again, <laughs> that move has been uh, very present in this game. So Dominguez could play rook to h2 to try to block that file. But then knight to f6 threatens a fork on g4 and completely encircles that king. The king has nowhere to go at all. Rook h3 check, king to g2, and then that's basically uh, it. There's nothing left for, for black to do if g4, the knight g4 check, and then just would take that remaining rook. So Ferugia did it, and it was a masterpiece and a brilliancy, and this is the person we've been waiting to see this whole tournament. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.